Whoa. This is the Universal Audio Game Changing Series of Audio Interfaces. This is the audio interface you've been waiting for. I'm taking charge of the things I couldn't control. Pay attention to the fact that I wasn't alone. They were calling the shots for me. But what I can, what I couldn't be. But I was too busy fighting the one who wouldn't leave me. In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of the features, comparisons of each model, sound demos, and I'll talk about a couple things you may have wanted but are missing from the Volt interfaces. Watch till the end because this video is going to help you decide if Volt interfaces are right for you and which one I would recommend. I've actually recorded identical mics on the same vocal take with and without the vintage button and the compressor features activated, so you're going to hear real-world side-by-side comparisons. All right, so why are these a big deal? Well, until now, Universal Audio interfaces have been expensive, mainly because the interfaces they've sold have internal DSP power to run their plugins, and they're also widely considered to be very high quality, and, well, they've got that Universal Audio name. But now, they've released new audio interfaces within reach of almost any producer, the Volt series. And they come with some sonic features that you won't find on other interfaces at this price. Volt 1 starts at $139, and yes, it has that vintage button to get the sound of the legendary Universal Audio 610 preamp, even on the cheapest one. Check out the difference in sound. I'm taking charge of the things I couldn't control. I'm taking charge of the things I couldn't control. Pay attention to the fact I wasn't alone. Pay attention to the fact I wasn't alone. They were calling the shots for me. Yes, that sheen, that shimmer, it's all there at the press of a button. And it doesn't end there. If you get one of the 76 models, which start at $249, you can get a legendary compressor emulation, the 1176, built right in as well. Check out the comparison recording I did with and without the 1176 compressor button engaged. They were calling the shots for me, for what I can, what I couldn't be. They were calling the shots for me, for what I can, what I couldn't be. But I was too busy fighting the one who wouldn't leave me. But I was too busy fighting the one who wouldn't leave me. They were calling the shots for me, for what I can, what I couldn't be. But I was too busy fighting the one who wouldn't leave me. They were calling the shots for me. What I can, what I couldn't be But I was too busy fighting the one who wouldn't leave me And here's the kicker. I really think these features are incredibly useful, not just for recording, but for another application. I'll get to that later in the video. Now let's get something out of the way. Are these worth it? In my opinion, yes. Simply because of the extra features you get at this price point. Now, is it worth spending the extra money little more to get the 76 models? Yes, for more reasons than one. I'll explain that in this video. First, I wanna let you know that Universal Audio sent me these interfaces. In fact, if some of you have been wondering what that big project I've been working on for the last couple of months was, it's actually a tutorial series on Volt that Universal Audio asked me to make. They'll be releasing those tutorial videos when the Volt interfaces start shipping, and they'll feature an original song I produced just for those videos. Yeah, I'm truly blessed to have been asked by Universal Audio to create their official tutorial videos. But, but, they didn't have any input into the video you're watching right now. I'm sharing my thoughts on these interfaces just for you. All right, let's get into the details. And if you're new around here, 
consider subscribing and hit that like button too. And if you decide to buy a Vault interface, you can use my affiliate links in the video description below. It helps me bring more of these videos to you and you still get the best deals out there. And if you already have an interface that you love, let me know what you're using in the comments below and why you're considering Vault. There are two versions of these interfaces, the regular model and the ones with the designation 76. So we've got the Vault 1 and the Vault 2 and then the 1 76, 276, and 476. So what's the 76? I'll get to that in a sec. Let's first cover some things that are common across all these interfaces. They are all bus powered, so no need to plug them into external power. Hey, they've even got a power switch. They all have an optional power port here. That's if you use them with an iPad or something that can't give them enough power. But for most setups, the USB cable will do it. And yes, you heard right. These are compatible with your iPad. So that vintage mode and the 1176 compressor, you'll have those with iPad recordings. While we're back here, you'll notice MIDI in and out. You get MIDI in and out on all Volt interfaces, and they all have quarter inch TRS outputs as well for your studio monitors. On the back of the Volt 476, you've got extra inputs and four extra outputs as well. So a total of four ins and four outs on the Volt 476. The Volt 1 and 176 have one combo mic slash instrument input, and the 2 and 276 models have two combo inputs. The combo inputs let you plug in an XLR or quarter inch cable, mics, guitars, synths, whatever. Every volt has a gain knob for each input and an ins button if you're plugging in a guitar. You've got a phantom power button for condenser mics and a direct monitor button to monitor with your headphones. Of course, you've got speaker volume and headphone volume controls as well. I've tested these interfaces with different mics and it drives them really well. Even the Shure SM7B without a cloud lifter. I had to turn up the gain a lot, but it powered that mic very well. And the headphone output? More than enough for the Biodynamic 250 ohm headphones or other headphones with high impedance. Now here's the first unique feature. Every Volt has a vintage button. Activating the vintage mode gives you the sound of a classic 610 preamp while you're recording in. Well, what's the big deal with the 610 preamp? Well, a 610 preamp is a classic preamp used in tons of professional recordings over the years. Audio engineers and producers seem to love the sonic flavor it adds to recordings. So I don't have an original 610 preamp here with me today to compare, but you can hear the difference in the recordings. What you're listening for is more presence, harmonics, and it's much more important to hear this in the mix. I'm taking charge of the things I couldn't control. I'm taking charge of the things I couldn't control. They were calling the shots for me. For my vocals, it added some top end sheen that got me closer to the final sound in the mix. It may not suit every recording, but it's there if you want that sound. So many people try to add this sound using software plugins. Even Universal Audio makes a plugin for the 610 sound. But many would argue that the right stage to add the preamp sound is when recording the source. Not too many interfaces have an optional preamp sound built in, especially at this price and with this type of portability. All right, so that wraps up the vintage mode and other common features about all these interfaces. What about the 76 models? Well, you get a few extra things on the 76 interfaces. But before we get to those, if you're recording songs at home and want to release them to the world, you may want to check out DistroKid, the sponsor of today's video. I use DistroKid to upload my music to Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, pretty much everywhere. No record label needed, I just do it myself straight from my computer. 
DistroKid distributes your music to all the popular platforms all at once, and they'll collect earnings from all the platforms so you get paid for downloads and plays. One of my favorite features of DistroKid is Hyperfollow. Your unique Hyperfollow page allows you to share your music anywhere you want to share the link, and it's easy to get people to follow you and keep up with future releases. Marketing your music, so important. I've actually created two dedicated videos on DistroKid. You can watch those videos right here. Check out those videos, and if you're ready to sign up, I'll include a link in the video description that will give you 7% off your first year of membership. Okay, so what's extra on the 76 models? Well, the biggest draw is an added onboard compressor. You heard that in the opening recordings. More on that in a second because there are some other differences I'll cover first. The design of the 76 models is very different. You have controls on the top, which are much easier to see and navigate. The 76 models have much better meters than the non-76 models. They're on top and they give you more lights, which means it's much easier to check your gain and output signals. And this is real wood too. I think it's worth spending the $110 more to get the 76 models. Even if you don't use a compressor every time, you get a nicer interface all around. So let's talk about the compressor feature. All the 76 models have a built-in compressor with three presets for vocals, guitars, and a fast preset which is useful on drums. A compressor helps you even out the volume of your recordings, pretty much minimizing the difference between the loudest and softest parts. Last time I checked, no other interface at this price features a compressor built in. And it gets more interesting. The 76 volt interfaces emulate the compression of a classic Universal Audio 1176 compressor. Those hardware compressors cost a lot, but of course you can get it in a plugin form as well. Do you use a compressor plugin? What do you use? Comment below. Here's the thing Is there any benefit to recording with compression on the way in? Well, there are pros and cons. I'll say this, I recently purchased an outboard compressor so that I can add mild compression when I record vocals. And it makes a pleasant difference. Nice, but not necessary. I think recording with a compressor adds some flavor to your recordings in addition to helping control volume. And it gets you closer to your final intended sound faster. When I recorded my vocals with the compression on the 76 interfaces, they added subtle compression, which is a good thing. They were calling the shots for me, for what I can, what I could be. They were calling the shots for me, for what I can, what I could be. You may not want to compress too hard on the way in because you can't undo this after. And that's important to note. If you use plugins, you can always undo or get rid of compression after if you decide to. If you've recorded with compression on your way in, you can't undo it. How does the 76 compressor sound on guitar? Here's a before and after. How about on drums? Well, I couldn't really test this because I don't have a drum set here, but here's something to note. You can use these presets on anything and experiment. Maybe the guitar compression setting sounds good on your vocals for a certain song. And of course, you can always just turn off the compressor. It's a cool recording feature to have, and it's probably very useful to you if you're new to recording and don't really understand how to use those plug-in compressors. But the fact that they modeled this compressor after the 1176 is pretty cool, but what really matters is how something sounds in your song. If this gives you the results that you're after, that's all that matters do things your way. So whether or not you use the vintage or compressor features for your recordings, they are extremely useful for another application, live. Whether you live stream or you decide to perform live with your Volt interface, you actually get a vintage preamp and compression without using any software or adding latency. This could be a game changer for you. Now on the flip side, are these interfaces missing anything? 
Yes, actually, a couple things. First and most important, I was hoping that Universal Audio would release budget interfaces that work with their highly coveted plugins. You see, all this time, the only way that you could use Universal Audio plugins is by purchasing a high-end UA Apollo interface or a Universal Audio satellite. That's high-end gear with a high-end price tag, but Volt can't run Universal Audio plugins. I hope that this is something that they can change in the future. But hey, just like any other audio interface, you can still use any other software plugins or the ones built into your DAW with the Volt interfaces. And, and Universal Audio has included a bunch of free software with the Volt interfaces. You get Ableton Live Lite, some plugins from Softube, Melodyne Essential, a really nice reverb plugin by Relab, some plugins from Plugin Alliance, UJAM Drummer Deep and Bassist Dandy, and Spitfire Lab stuff. Wait a second, Spitfire Labs instruments are free for everyone. Why do they even include that? Anyway, what else is missing? Well, these interfaces don't include a dedicated monitor mix knob. That's something I talked about in my video about the Arturia Minifuse interfaces. A monitor mix knob lets you balance the volume between your input signal and the music coming from your DAW. It helps when you're recording in. You might want to hear more of yourself or more of the music. It's a useful feature to have, but not absolutely necessary. Still, it's important to note that these don't have that. Okay, so what's my final verdict on Volt? Well, two things. I think they've created an excellent audio interface for a very competitive price. You have the option of recording using a different type of preamp that you may really love on your recordings. You also get a compressor that may be a game changer for you, especially if you do anything live. I think the Volt 276 is the one to buy for most people. You get all the features I talked about with two inputs for guitars, vocals, two microphones, or even a stereo synth. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you're ready to buy Volt, you can find links to the latest prices in the video description below. One last thing. If you want to compare Volt to some other new and popular interfaces, I just made a video about the Artoria Minifuse, and in that video, I compared it to the super popular Focusrite Scarlett and the Motu M2. You can check out that video next. Keep making the music you love, my friends, and I'll see you again soon.